Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Mr. A. I'm a science teacher at the high school, and you may have heard of some excitement coming up on April 8th, 2024. Uh, it's a total solar eclipse crossing North America from Texas all the way up to Maine and into Canada. Uh, it's a big deal astronomically, and while you may have heard of the total solar eclipse, I'm here today to talk about the 96% solar eclipse which we'll be experiencing in the Norwin community. I'll explain what that means in a moment, uh, but it is either way a big deal. Let me give you a quick overview. And uh, even if you're not from the Norwin community, stick around, it'll be a fun talk. So here's a picture, not to scale, of the sun, the earth, and the moon. And on occasions, the moon positions itself correctly and at the right distance so that the sun hits the moon, the moon casts a shadow over the Earth's surface. And if you look closely at the picture of the Earth, you can see that there is a bigger shadowed area called the penumbra, and then a much narrower shadow area in the middle, a really dark dot called the umbra. And uh, the umbra occurs where the sun is perfectly blocked by the moon. And again, it's just a coincidence that the moon happens to be just the right size to block out the sun, and it doesn't even always happen at that. Uh, we just sort of won the cosmic lottery as far as that goes. Uh, so on rare occasions, we get this instant where the where the moon completely blocks the sun in a in a path that travels across the Earth uh, and creates a total solar eclipse. Now the other areas outside of that are still going to experience an eclipse, but they're not going to experience a total solar eclipse. What does that mean? All right on this map, you can see the paths of two different solar eclipses, the one from August 2017 and the one that's coming up in April 2024. And the path of the 2017 one, if you notice, is quite a bit more distant from Pittsburgh than the 2024 path is. So if you remember, uh, back in August 2017. Again, we, we did see the uh, partial solar eclipse. We were further out in the penumbra. And so the sky never got really that dark, but it, Pittsburgh, it was a pretty nice day, all things considered. And if you had your eclipse glasses, you know, it was kind of a fun little thing to take a look at. If you compare that to the path of the 2024 eclipse, however, you can see that the 2024 eclipse going from Mexico all the way up to Canada does pass much closer to the North Huntington, North Irwin, Irwin areas. And so what that means is it's going to be a much more dramatic experience for us because we're going to be that much closer to the path of totality. We're not completely in the path of totality, but we're way closer and it's going to lead to a much more dramatic event. Looking at the 2024 eclipse from another perspective. Uh, this is a really nice graphic that shows the eclipse path as that dark band in the middle. And then to the north and the south of it, you can see the percent totality, uh, which means approximately how much of the sun is gonna be covered from where you are. And again, if you take a look at the map, basically the entire United States is gonna be experiencing the eclipse on April 8th. But you can see some of them are going to be kind of like we where we were in 2017. I mean, it'll be happening, but it won't be super dramatic. Uh, this time around, though, for the Norman community, we are much, much closer to the eclipse path. So it's going to be a lot more dramatic for us. So there we are. We're super close. Not 100%, but we are super close. You know who is 100%? These guys. Who's that? Freaking Cleveland. Cleveland. It's 100%. Can't believe it. I mean, good for them. Happy for them. But come on, Cleveland. Come on. So in any case, this is where we're going to get in North Huntington. It's not too shabby. It's not too shabby. Officially, I believe we're at 96.4% uh, coverage, uh, which puts us sort of in a, in a darker shadow area. But it's not going to be 100% totality. So you can see there's still going to be a sliver of the sun visible a little after 3 o'clock. Uh, and that's still like the real sun. I mean, it's it's as bright as the sun. If you wouldn't look at the sun on a normal day, don't look at the sun, even if it's a tiny sliver, because it's still the sun. This is a picture from the 2017 uh, eclipse. Uh, I forget exactly what state this was taken in. 
But these people, uh, if I remember from the caption, we're in an area that's pretty similar to what we're going to be in. Uh, almost 90, uh, almost 100% coverage, but not perfect. Uh, but you can see they're wearing those uh, cardboard glasses. Uh, the eclipse glasses are great because they block out like 99 point something percent of the sunlight uh, so that you can actually look at the sun with your eyes directly. Um, and that's really the, the safest way to observe the eclipse directly. Uh, if you don't, if you're like this guy, this guy, you can see he's looking at the sun without any protection. Um, and this guy puts himself at risk of damaging his eyes because your eyes, even if there's just a sliver of the sun visible, it's still the sun. Uh, and it, have you ever had a really bad sunburn and it like hurts for days, like super bad? Okay, imagine that same sunburn on the inside of your eyeball. That's what you get. If you stare at the sun for too long, uh, it can be super painful, super just awkward. Uh, could take a couple of days to recover. Uh, in really bad cases, it could be permanent damage. You know what they call that? Freaking photokeratitis. Photo. Photokeratitis. Photo. That word. Okay. Not good. Do you want to avoid that? If you don't have any eclipse glasses, you could use uh, a pretty simple approach. If you go online and you look up, you can look up all sorts of alternate devices. There's boxes that you can look into and all kinds of things that you can like observe the eclipse sort of indirectly using some pretty simple equipment. Uh, but this might be the simplest. It's just called a pinhole projector. Uh, and you just take a paper plate, punch a hole in it. Uh, you got to sort of fiddle around with the distance of the plate from the surface that you're casting onto, maybe a, a sheet of cardboard or a piece of poster board. And you position things right, and you'll get an image of the sun um, just sitting on a, a piece of cardboard. If you want to try it before the eclipse just to practice, I mean, it works any day you want to. Just most people don't try it on normal days because, you know, you're just going to see the sun. Um you can use it with like straw hats. You can look between leaves and trees. You can cross your fingers. Uh, there's lots of ways to create pin, to create pinhole projectors, but just remember, you still can't look at the sun directly through the pinhole. You'll be looking at the sun. You don't want to damage your eyes. Um, so let's go through some common questions that you might see associated with viewing the eclipse. Uh, is the sun actually more dangerous during eclipse? The answer is no. Although more people do look at the sun during the eclipse, though, so potentially um, it's more dangerous just because more people are spending time staring at it than we normally do on a regular day. Uh, but but the sun itself is not more dangerous during the eclipse. Uh, you might be able to see some special parts of it that you don't normally get to see if you're in the path of totality, just because those areas are a little bit faint and tend to get washed out by the really, really bright body of the sun. Uh, but there's nothing about it that makes it inherently more dangerous. It's still the sun. Is it ever safe to look at the sun directly during an eclipse? Generally, no, unless you're in that path of totality that I mentioned earlier. Now, again, Norwin is not in the path of totality. We're close to it, but we're not in it. So it's never safe to look at the sun directly in North Huntington during the eclipse or Irwin or North Irwin. Um, but if you're in the path of totality, you will get a couple minutes, depending on where you're located, uh, where you can actually take off your glasses and look at the sun directly. And again, you're looking at the sun blocked by the moon, uh, but often you'll see these pretty cool like coronal uh, halos around it and stuff like that. Um, so my understanding, it's a pretty cool experience, uh, but the instant the sun starts coming out from behind the moon again, you got to put your sun glass, you've got to put your eclipse glasses black back on. Uh, and I just use my cell phone to see the eclipse. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of warranty you plan ha have on it, but uh, generally, no, you should. Uh, you could damage your camera because the, the the camera elements are not designed to be pointed directly at the sun for probably the amount of time you're going to be doing it. Um, and in addition, uh, there is some concern that if you're holding your phone up to your face, trying to use it to look at the sun, that occasionally you're going to shift and not line things up perfectly, and you're going to be looking at the sun directly instead of looking at it through your camera. Uh, so that's also uh, potential for eye damage. 
What if you have a pair of Eclipse glasses and you want to use them as a filter for your cell phone? Uh, generally, NASA suggests that's a bad idea. Uh, the concern is, again, uh, all the reasons that we said before, and that Eclipse glasses aren't actually designed to, to physically do that job well. There are filters that you can get specifically for your cell phone that will attach to your cell phone, maybe little Velcro patches and stuff like that. So you can get filters specifically for your cell phone uh, if you want to use your cell phone to, to make those observations. Uh, what if uh, you wanted to use a regular camera or a telescope to view the eclipse? Could you do that? You can, but only, again, if you've got that special solar filter. If you look at the eclipse with a regular camera through the lens of a regular camera, if you look at an eclipse through the lens of a telescope, you could be risking a much quicker eye damage unless you have that solar filter. And it's my understanding that really the solar filters should go over the lens. Uh, if you ever see a solar filter that goes over the eyepiece instead, uh, generally that's uh, considered to be no good because you're allowing all that light to come into the device you want to block the light from coming into the device in the first place. So I don't know if you're shopping online and you see a, a filter that attaches to the eyepiece instead of to the lens in the front, I, would, I wouldn't I would buy that one. Uh, buy or beware. Uh, so there we are. Quick overview of the eclipse. It is coming up on April 8th, so let's hope for clear skies. Uh, Pittsburgh is not famous for them, but sunny days do happen. Uh, that said, if we don't get a nice sunny day on April 8th, I mean, there is another one coming up, but it's not for a while. Freaking 2044. 2044. We got to wait till we get another total solar eclipse coming across the continental United States. So let's just hope for good, good weather on April 8th. And that's it. Thanks for joining me on this uh, relatively uh, short overview of eclipses. Uh, there's tons of great resources online. Um, I'll try to link some in the descriptions below. And uh, lots of fun research to do to learn more about eclipses. Uh, thanks for watching. And please do not sunburn your eyes. Have a great one.